Hello guys. Uh, good evening all. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, one sec. Yeah, so I think we started last class thermodynamics, correct? Right, so we were discussing terms involved in thermodynamics and I think we stopped at heat, correct? We're talking about heat capacity. Just check your notes and confirm once. Yes. So we'll continue with this heat just a second. I'll just uh, pause this. Okay, so we had discussed about heat capacity last class, and um, we have seen the, you know, the assumption also that we had IUPAC, you know, assumption, and it says just a quick recap of it. Sorry, heat. We say that heat is represented by Q. Okay, and heat is. Uh, given to the system given to the system is positive right is positive and heat released by the system by the system when system is releasing heat it is assumed to be negative this is the iupac a uh, convention we have okay so what is heat heat we have discussed it is the energy transfer that takes place because of difference in temperature we also have seen the total heat capacity total heat capacity it is the heat required to change the temperature by 1 degree okay this is the total heat capacity okay unit is joule per kelvin Joule per Kelvin is the unit for this. In this only, we have two types we have, which is molar heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Molar heat capacity and specific heat capacity, correct? To raise the temperature by one degree. Change the temperature, both are the same thing. Means one degree difference in temperature you must have. Either it is raised, right? Obviously, you are providing heat, so temperature will raise. So change also the same thing. 
करेक्ट मोलर हिट कैपेसिटी लाइक जूल पर कैलरी टोटल हिट कैपेसिटी मोलर हिट कैपेसिटी एज वी डिस्कस लास्ट क्लास इट इज फॉर वन मोल राइट वन मोर टर्म वी हैव हियर दैट इज स्पेसिफिक हीट कैपेसिटी मोलर इज डिफाइंड फॉर वन मोल स्पेसिफिक इज डिफाइंड फॉर वन ग्राम so unit for this is joule per mole kelvin and this is joule per gram kelvin this is the unit we have okay this is the thing that we had discussed okay now if i write down till here i think we had discussed last class i think some of you haven't joined yet now do you have any exam in the school going on or about to start guys because i can see only few of you have joined like you know Nine or ten of you. Where are others? Any information? Any exam in the school? About to start or going on? Okay. Okay, fine. Not a problem. okay now you see if dq is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature by dt okay this is the assumption we are making so to change in change in temperature by dt the amount of heat required is dq if 1 degree change is required then amount of heat required is dq by dt so this is the specific heat we have or we can say the total heat capacity total heat capacity okay dq by dt by definition one degree rise in temperature the amount of heat required okay if we define this for molar heat capacity so per mole we have so one mole substance you need to take okay so you see q here or dq if i write down dq is equals to the total heat capacity is c into dt total heat capacity c into dt we can write okay further we can write this as for n number of moles n into
n into c d t we can write or we can write m s m s d t okay where this c is the terms you must understand here c is the molar heat capacity because we have n number of moles here molar heat capacity s is the specific heat capacity sometimes a specific heat capacity also represented by c capital c it is s or capital c molar heat capacity is small c i'll just write down for your reference this is capital and this is small with this also we represent it one question on this they have asked in neat exam i'll tell you what was the question actually but this is the formula we have this becomes molar heat capacity and specific heat capacity okay now did you copy this so further we can write q is equals to q is equals to c cm suppose the molar heat capacity small c it is it is delta t and n c or s simply i'll write down m s delta t we have here yeah i'll just go back one second so this is the relation of q we have with total heat capacity or you know molar heat capacity or specific heat capacity this is the relation then now you see one very important thing i am going to you know tell you over here from this relation we get this how do we get this by integrating them and put the limit correct so what we are doing we are integrating all these expressions right we are integrating all these expressions and we are taking this heat capacity outside the integral sign and this we can do only when it is independent of temperature so when when you write after this when you write this expression here this expression it means it means what heat capacity whether it is molar or specific heat capacity is independent of temperature yes independent of temperature most of the time it is independent only if it is not mentioned then also we consider it is independent okay so note down this point change in heat capacity change in heat capacity with temperature is negligible with temperature is negligible so if it is not not mentioned so if it is not mentioned we assume it as constant if it is not mentioned we assume it as constant
Okay, this is one thing. So what I said, if it is not given the relation of specific heat capacity and temperature, you have to take it as constant. Okay. Fine. Now, you see under, under different different condition, what is the value of heat capacity, okay? Based on this relation, this relation you must keep in mind, okay? Suppose I am assuming, achha, Oishik, we have just started the, uh, we started, just now we started few minutes back, I was doing some revision and I think this is the only thing that we have done new which is this. Till now we had discussed last class. I have done the revision of it. And then we did this. Thermodynamics, we are continuing. Understood? Yeah. Okay. Now, we'll do the calculation of heat capacity based on the process. So heading you write down all of you. Calculation of heat capacity. Heat capacity, okay. So if the process is isothermal, then what happens? Could you tell me in isothermal process, what is the value of delta T? Delta T for isothermal processes, zero, no change in temperature is zero. And when Delta T is zero, what is the value of C or CM or S? It is infinity. No doubt. When the process is adiabatic, what is adiabatic process? Delta T is zero. So what is C? Q by zero, infinity. Got it? Yeah. That's what I said, Auro. This is zero delta T. So what is C from this? See, just focus on this relation. We are going to calculate C with respect to this relation only. So if delta T is zero, Q is, C is what? Q by zero, infinity. Adiabatic process, we know in adiabatic process, delta Q or Q is equals to zero. When Q is zero, what is the value of C? Could you tell me? C value, zero again. Adiabatic isothermal. They, they are not going to ask you these two things. Okay, just for understanding we are doing this. Copy this down. You know what is first law of thermodynamics? Yes, keep that in mind. We haven't done this, no? First law we haven't done. I'll take the reference of it. Yeah, I'll take the reference of it just to make you understand one thing. After some time, we'll discuss first law of thermodynamics also because we are discussing Q, we'll discuss U then, we'll discuss work done, enthalpy, and then we'll see the first law of thermodynamics.
Okay. So this is the two things we have. Now the third one is third one is isocodic process. What is isocodic process? Volume constant. Yes. So we have volume constant. Okay, so molar heat capacity at constant volume. Molar heat capacity at constant volume is represented as CV. Okay, molar heat capacity at constant volume is represented as C V. Okay. And this C is the small one, small C. Okay. Capital, if you write down capital C, then that would be capital C, I'll write down like this. Okay. Capital C, that would be the specific heat capacity. Okay. So DQ is equals to C V D T and CV is equals to DQ by DT. And remember this relation we have at constant volume. So if you look at the relation of first law of thermodynamics, DU is equals to DQ plus DW. Pressure we know PDV, right? If volume is constant, DV is zero, means work done is zero over here. Work done is zero. And hence DQ is equals to DU. So if I substitute here DU, we'll get CV is equals to DU by DT. CV is, is equals to DU by DT, isocodic process. Similarly, if you think of first, you copy down this, I'll go to the next slide. Okay, now in the next one you see, isocodic we are done. Now the next one is isobaric process. Isobaric process. And molar heat capacity, we know isobaric is constant pressure. Constant pressure and uh, molar heat capacity at constant pressure is CP, a small one, okay, CP. And the relation is again, CP is equals to DQ by DT at constant pressure, right? And at constant pressure, Q is nothing but enthalpy that we'll discuss later. For now, you just write down this formula, DQ is equals to DH by DT. So at constant pressure, the energy is nothing but enthalpy. 
dh by dt we'll discuss this enthalpy we'll discuss uh, separately and then you will understand this for this just you copy this down now okay done yes now so we had discussed work we have discussed a uh, heat that is q w and q we have discussed now we'll see internal energy and then we'll see the first law of thermodynamics on this the third term you write down internal energy it is represented by either u capital u or capital e internal energy internal energy is what we just discuss this internal energy on micro level okay it is the energy of the molecules atoms which is present there in the system okay usually what we do we write internal energy u is equals to it is the sum of all kind of energy actually it is the sum of kinetic energy potential energy and chemical energy what all different kinds of energy you can think of all these comes under internal energy okay of the system if you see kinetic energy kinetic energy is the function of temperature right we know kinetic energy depends only upon temperature so kinetic energy is a function of temperature potential energy is the function of volume right because if the volume is more then the molecules are far apart their potential energy will be less if the molecules are close their potential energy will be high so potential energy is because of the position of the molecules per atoms particles present hence it is a function of volume yes did you understand why volume if volume changes the relative distance between the molecules changes the relative distance changes then what happens then potential energy also changes okay so basically from this point what we can write that internal energy for any system u is the function of temperature and volume temperature and volume it is a function of temperature and volume and if you differentiate this du is equals to eilert's differentiation will do we'll have du by do u by do t at constant v into dt plus do u by do v at constant t into dv this you don't uh, you know you don't require this it is not there in your syllabus okay but just for you know to get the understanding of internal energy we are doing this okay because one relation will get which is very important here du by dt at constant volume is what du at is equals to cv dt plus it is do u by do v at constant temperature into dv is it clear yes this is for one mole if you have n number of moles here du by dt we can write ncvdt or if i write down here 
it is n CVDT for n number of moles we can write down. In general, expression is this. For n number of moles, du by dt is n CV. So n CV into dt. Right? So this is the formula for the change in internal energy. Have you seen this formula before? I'll explain. Yes, Ansh, just one second. Have you seen the formula of change in internal energy? What is change in internal energy formula? Change in internal energy formula you must have seen. That is NCVDT. Have you seen that? NCVDT? Yes, yes, correct, correct. Only NCVDT part was there. Where did you see this formula? Okay. Okay. Yes, now you listen to me. See, the actual formula for du is this. Change in internal energy is this. Okay, how do we get this formula? Again, I'll explain this. From this relation, we understood that internal energy is a function of temperature and volume. Correct? Achha, one more, uh, just one more question, you just answer me. Where this formula is applicable, du is equals to NCVDT, where this formula is applicable? always applicable, correct. This formula is always applicable. Constant volume is not the any criteria over here. First of all, this thing is understand. So you must know when we are using NCVDT, uh, what, what's, what's that auto? What's do, achha, do. Do is, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll explain this a second. So you need to understand you are writing down du is equals to ncvdt this for constant volume cv is defined at constant volume then why that formula is not applicable only for constant volume it is applicable for all processes no whether the volume is constant or not okay so that's what you will understand it from here okay do is partial derivative see if you have one function i'll come back to this expression this is uh, you know if you have a function, suppose I'm randomly, I'm taking M is a function and it depends upon two variable it is a function of suppose P and Q. Okay. So M depends upon P and Q. So we can find out DM is equals to by partial derivative DM by D, do M by do P. And when we are differentiating M with, with respect to P, we are keeping Q as constant. So do M by do P partial derivative of M with respect to P keeping Q constant into DP plus again the another variable do M by do Q we are you are differentiating with respect to Q keeping P as constant into DQ this is Euler's formula Euler's formula okay you don't need to know yes
yes hello can you hear me yeah it was parkat parkat or a parkat was there yeah it's fine okay yeah yeah so this is the ilers formula we have one you know it is a dependent variable these two are independent variable so this variable depends upon two variable here p and q so we can find out the change in m dm by this formula okay you are not going to use this formula anymore in engineering mathematics you will have the use of it right but we'll have this expression i'll go back to the change in internal energy expression we have here and we get this so this is the expression for change in internal energy write down here it is applicable for applicable for all conditions or processes this is the in general formula and it is applicable for everything now so this is the formula we have all of you have copied down this have you written this okay now like you said du is equals to ncv dt now what is this formula right and how do we get this this is what we need to understand here okay now you see what is this term du by dv at constant temperature we'll try to understand this so let us see this term first we have do u by do v at constant temperature this is the expression we have okay so u is what u is energy and v is volume so we can also write this as it is energy per unit volume energy per unit volume and we know energy is work work is p into v so further we can understand this as p into v by v which is pressure so do u by do v this term is the pressure or for gases it is the internal pressure actually internal pressure we have here okay just for your understanding okay so do u by do v into dv is the internal pressure now we will taking one condition here what is that condition condition is for ideal gas could you tell me what is the internal pressure for ideal gas p internal what is the internal pressure for ideal gas internal pressure is zero no we have discussed no there is no interaction in the ideal gas we do not have any interaction correct so internal pressure is zero which means what which further means what which further means this do u by do v is equals to zero as it is the expression of internal pressure so in this expression here you see in this expression here yes in this expression here for ideal gas this term would be zero and hence the formula is du is equals to ncv dt so the formula that you get here hence for ideal gas the change in internal energy du is n cv dt the formula we have and this formula you see this formula is applicable for all processes for ideal gas wherever we have ideal gas and mostly we are dealing with ideal gas only so for ideal gas this formula is correct whether the volume is constant or not did you get it
yes so this formula that we use it is applicable for ideal gas at all process it's not like ncvdt we have so only for constant volume will apply this no if ideal gas is there we can apply this formula now one more thing you see second condition in this if you have a closed rigid container for closed rigid container what is dv for closed rigid container close and rigid container dv dv is again zero right so when dv is zero look at this expression here look at this expression if this dv is zero again du is equals to what ncvdt right so if you have a closed rigid container means non ideal gas if it is present in a closed rigid container then also the formula for du is equals to n cv dt this formula is applicable for all ideal gas or for a closed rigid container so, so if a real gas is present in a closed rigid container then also we can apply this formula tell me any doubt in this now you understood where we got from where we get this uh, formula of du and why du is equals to ncvdt is applicable for all processes where whether the volume is constant or not next write down first law of thermodynamics okay first law of thermodynamics is basically the conservation of energy conservation of energy it is based on this actually based on the conservation of energy suppose we have state 1 and from this we are going to state 2 by some process we don't know what process it is but there is a change in the state by some processes so here suppose we have initial internal energy ui and this is the final internal energy uf we have here okay so that the change in internal energy delta u is equals to uf minus ui now this change in internal energy we can do 
by heat flow right by allowing heat flow into the system heat flow into the system or we can also do it by work done by work done on the system on the system or by the system both way we can do it on or by okay both way we can change the internal energy okay so now suppose we have internal energy ui initially and you provided q amount of heat into it so plus q since you are giving heat plus q and and work is done on the system if i write down this theory over here just a second if i write down this if heat absorbed heat absorbed and work done work done on the system so we are doing work on the system so this will increase the internal energy so the final internal energy uf is equals to we have ui initial internal energy plus q amount of heat absorbed and work done on the system so plus w we have so uf minus ui is equals to what uf minus ui delta u is equals to q plus w so this expression is we have delta u is equals to q plus w where w is the work done on the system always keep that in mind it is the work done on the system on the system always now we can also have this possibility that if heat absorbed and work done by the system system is doing work okay copy this down first done okay next you see if heat is absorbed and work done and work done by the system so what we can write system is doing work so work done is what this is negative heat absorbed right heat is absorbed so it is positive so ui is the initial internal energy q amount of heat it absorbs and out of this much amount of energy w amount of work is done since it is done by the system so minus w this would be the total internal energy so uf minus ui that is delta u is equals to q minus w and further we can write q is equals to delta u plus w so when you write this expression it means work done by the system we have
this is the wd work done by the system then okay so we have the expression here and the expression is if this is the expression work done by the system if the expression is this delta u is equals to q plus w this means work done on the system clear so this is the difference in the two expression we have on the system by the system convention difference we have now few conclusion of first law of thermodynamics you see first one if delta u is equals to 0 this means what the change in internal energy is zero and the change in internal energy will be zero for we can say cyclic process any other process in which change in change in internal energy is zero any other process in which change in internal energy is zero apart from cyclic process internal energy depends upon what internal energy depends upon depends upon temperature so yes isothermal is the another process we have in which the change in internal energy is zero so when change in internal energy is zero then what we can write dq is equals to minus dw dq is equals to minus dw one way is this we can write and if you write this expression it means what minus dw is what work done on the system or by the system it is wd work done by the system understand it carefully okay it is work done by the system this is plus dq plus dq means what heat absorbed by the system isn't it heat absorbed by this let me know if you are not getting it is it clear yes correct no yeah now if you try to understand this is the mathematical relation we have if you try to understand it this way suppose you have a system system has some internal energy which we don't want to increase or decrease means we want this delta u is to be constant delta u is zero and 
we want this to be constant and system is taking 10 joule of heat from surroundings 10 joule of heat system is taking from surroundings we want u to be constant what you need to do so that this u is constant while we are taking this 10 joule of energy what we need to do the amount of energy that you are taking in equal amount of work has to be done right that's very good right 10 joule of energy you are taking and if equal amount of work if you do 10 joule of work if you do it means there is no net gain or loss of energy for the system and hence delta u is constant and that is what the mathematical relation we have here the amount of energy absorbed equal amount of work done by the system any doubt any doubt okay we can also write this as we can also write this as minus dq is equals to plus dw this is also possible means heat released by the system in this type this is not a process anushka anusha okay this is not a process we are just trying to understand in different different condition what is the possibility we have okay yeah minus dq is equals to dw it means heat released by the system is equals to work done on the system if 10 joule of heat if you release it means 10 joule of work you need to do on the system so that u remains constant yes okay now the second condition you see suppose we have a process we have a you know a process in which the work done is zero second one you see if work done is zero this means what work done is zero means du is equals to dq we can write du is equals to dq means this is plus heat absorbed by the system is equals to increase in internal energy because this is also positive no so we can say what plus dq is heat absorbed by the system and this is increase in internal energy increase in internal energy if internal energy decreases then heat is lost by the system to maintain zero work done done understood yes understood okay now the second case i'll write down the third one i'll write down quickly this is what you can observe like this if the process is adiabatic adiabatic process so we know in adiabatic process delta q is equals to 0 so we have delta u is equals to delta w means adiabatic process means what there is no exchange of energy means suppose you have a system system can't take energy from surroundings because the process is adiabatic and it is doing work means if it does work it means it does work on the cost of its own energy means internal energy will decrease if work is done by the system correct work done by the system internal energy decreases work done on the system internal energy increases is it fine
So all these different different condition you can think of whether internal energy decreases or increases accordingly. Understood? Clear? Okay, we'll see some questions on this first law of thermodynamics. One second, guys. Okay, I'm not getting it here. See this question. The question is, a, ga a gas occupy two liter at STP. It is provided Three hundred joule heat, so that its volume becomes two point five liter at one atm, one atmospheric. Calculate delta U change in internal energy. Try this one. No, 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 you cannot. Take the exact value.
No, that's not right. 350 is wrong. What is the answer, Anusha? No, that's also wrong. 150 is wrong. Mm -hmm. No, 300 is also wrong. 450 is wrong. 470 is wrong. 250 is right, yes. 250 approximately it's right. Okay, so here, work done, is equals to, we'll write minus P external delta V, minus P external delta V, P external is one atmospheric, so minus one into 2.5 minus two, that is minus 0.5 unit is liter ATM. Okay, liter ATM. So this is liter ATM. We need to convert this into Joule, right? So we know one liter ATM, this is the relation. We have one ATM liter is equals to 101.328 joule approximately we have or if you don't remember this i have given you last class the relation that is 0 0.0821 atm liter is equals to uh 8.314 joule this is the relation we have so one atm liter you can easily find out eight point 314 divided by 0.0821 atm liter joule sorry okay with this also we can change 0.5 atm liter into 101.328 joule approximately when you solve this you will get minus 50.631 joule of work done now q is equals to you see, a gas occupy this, provided this joule of heat, volume becomes this. So there's expansion, right? So work done by the gas we have here, right? So work done by the gas, what we'll write? Delta U is equals to Q plus W. Right? We need to find out what? Change in internal energy. So Q is 300 Joule of heat provided. And then work done is minus 50.631 Joule. So when you do this, you'll get 249 point something, 37 Joule.
Got it? So change in unit you must remember. One more question you see on this. This question you see. 2.8 gram of N2 gas. of N2 gas at 300 Kelvin and 20 atmospheric pressure was allowed to expand to expand isothermally against against a constant external pressure against a p external one atmospheric calculate Delta U, Q and W for the gas. Try this one. 